All right, so today we are talking with Armida about her experiences as uh, she was in the DCP. So please tell us a little bit about yourself and like what Hi, really yeah. made you fall in love with the Disney company um, and what was your spark of affinity for, you know, Disney in general? Yeah, so my name is Armida. Um, I'm on TikTok as Queen Latina underscore for those of you who maybe are like familiar with me or what I do. Um, but uh, I'm a cosplayer and um, a general like love of all things pop culture. So um, I, it, it kind of actually started for me when I was a very, I was very young. I was probably maybe even an infant, I would, I would dare say. But my parents are both from Southern California um, in like a little bit uh, south of Pasadena. So that they kind of grew up in, in that environment. And my entire family's always had an affinity for Disney, but it started with me when like for Christmas, we would always fly back to Southern California because my dad wanted to see his mom for Christmas every year. Mm -hmm. So we would go to Disneyland with my mom's mother. She would take me and my sister together every year. Like my first memory of Disney is like sitting in Minnie Mouse's lap in her little kitchen with like the noises ever in it and like the cute little laundry like thing the dishwasher and like all those like fantastical elements of her house I, love that. Um, I think I was like three. Um, oh wow yeah I was like three years old and my grandma decided that because we like it, it kind of got a little bit hectic as we started to like make a tradition that like we'd be there every Christmas sure but like people started getting married and babies started popping out and funerals were happening and emergencies happened so we would be, we were back and forth between here and California for most of my life. Um, I kind of, I do feel like, like half of my life is, is still over there. So mm. like what would, like what would happen is that we would pop over there and I, me and my sister would have nothing to do because we were too young to deal with all this stuff. Right. So my grandma decided we're going to be annual pass holders and we're going to like, she bought the premium one with no block out dates. So then even during the holidays we could go. So it, it was she, her idea was that she wanted us to be prepared to go in case anything happens. So that's kind of what we did from when I was three until I was about maybe, I want to say like 21, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That stopped. Nice. Yeah. So years I was holding that thing. And um, it was always, it was a cute little flex that I had in like middle school. Like I would have my, like my, my lander with my like school ID and on the back with my annual pass. In Love like that. in the middle of Philadelphia. And then like I would go to Disneyland and they would they asked for ID and I'd pull out my school ID from Pennsylvania. And they're like, whoa. Like, <laughs> Correct. You are right. So we did that for a really long time. Um, and it it just be, kind of became my comfort spot very quickly because I was like, I'm the only Latin kid in an entire, entirely white neighborhood of like very, very rich white people. So they don't really see the world from outside of their little neck of the woods and I mean that literally they yeah, don't sure. see the world they don't really see the world beyond that um so I was very much not a part of their experience and when I came in they were very shocked by me and per that they excluded me a lot and they made fun of me a lot especially because I was I I did I don't I didn't like I don't look I didn't look like this years ago so I probably, and that, that probably factors into it. If I had been maybe a little bit more attractive, they would have accepted me, but that's neither here nor there at this point. But, um, so I would go to Disney and like, when I was a kid, I'd go and I'd see Minnie and she would hug me and she would love me. And that felt like the acceptance that I wanted when I was in school, but never got. I'm Even so glad you school. had like, that though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, that's yeah awesome. it was wonderful. Like, and and then as an adult, like when I stopped going all the time, like I would, I would crave it. I still crave it all the time. And, um, and then, so when I was in college, my, uh, one of my best friends started as my, like my scene partner in school. And if he's listening to this, Noah, I love you. So we, um, he was talking about what he wanted to do after college. He's a year older than me. So he would say like, I would love to do the, the Disney college program. Like I did it when I was in, when I was a junior and I had time in my life, he would tell me all about it. Like working for wishes in Florida and like That's seeing awesome. that every night and his mm -hmm. experience with that. And he won this contest where he got to meet some Imagineers. Oh, I love and that. He ended up getting a job with Disney Imagineering. And I, in my senior year, I flew out to see him and he showed me 
his perspective as an Imagineer of the park and it blew my mind. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I could love it more, but finding out, seeing it through his eyes, I just, that was it for me. And I told him that night, I was like, I'm going to do the, the DCP when I graduate. I'm going to fly out here. I'm going to move here. And like, this is what I want to do. And he encouraged me the whole time. He helped me a lot with my application. And um, then I applied in, I think like February. Like I, it was actually like a week away from my birthday. Oh, so, wow. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. It was really fun. So I'm sitting in my classroom, in like this classroom, and my professor hasn't walked in yet. And I'm on my phone and I get an email. And my friend who's next to me applied for Florida at the same time as me. So we both get an email and we both just start screaming. I'm like, oh my God, we got in. So we got in and I was put into entertainment costuming. And that interview was very like, they were like, so you want, you're interested in costuming. Like, what's your experience? And I'm like, let me tell you something about my theater degree. Right. <laughs> and they were like, done. So I, with the first puddle of acceptances was me in that, that year. It was, um, January of 2019 nice. I was that first puddle of acceptances so that was a huge moment for me um and that's when I kind of like went from more like like guest to cast member I feel like I live in the in-between of both now too because a lot of my friends are still cast members right so I kind of I, I actually really enjoy where I'm at like where I can go to the park as a guest but also view it as a cast member as well so mm -hmm. it's really interesting yeah it definitely is interesting to like go through and see it like through someone who has the backgrounds, mm -hmm. you know, like eyes, because so I also have a friend who she started um, with the Walt Disney company um, in her DCP um, after we graduated from college. Um, and she's been working in Hollywood studios ever since. Like she went from mm -hmm. DCP to part-time to full-time um, you know, she's worked her way up and now she's um, an area coordinator over Aww. in toy story mm -hmm. land. Um, right. she, she was on the opening team in galaxy's edge, Ooh, um, yes. you know, and all this stuff too, because she had area coordinator experience background in toy story land. Um, mm -hmm. and then post shutdown, they brought her back to toy story land, um, instead of galaxy's edge. Um, but it is very interesting to like hear things from a cast member perspective, you know, too. like, so for example, mm -hmm. the time that I got stuck on, um, tower of terror and we had to be oh. manually evac off of tower of terror, like we, we, it, was actually super cool but like we told her that and she like Sarah like it actually feels weird to call her Sarah because I have two mm -hmm. friends that are named Sarah and we're all like friends so we yeah. put s on their last name so they're Skang and Smatthews mm -hmm. and so oh, okay. Smatthews was like wait what you got manually evac'd off of Tower of Terror? Like, that's like a life goal for me. And I was like, well, if a cast member <laughs> thinks that this is mega cool, then like, this is obviously mega cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. It's really interesting to see it through like cast member perspective. So it's, it's kind of awesome that you get to have both mm -hmm. at the same time in absolutely, a way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So you talked about like, you know, working for and like getting your application done, working for the company. Like, Mm -hmm. what what did your job like really entail because I know you were costuming um what was that like for you just in general oh, it was mind-blowing and I knew going in that my life my, my perspective on Disney was going to flip upside down from an entertainment perspective oh, yeah. as I'm sure one assumes when you're going into entertainment costuming I feel like any average guest walking into that space you know you're going to see things differently from here on out. Mm -hmm. I have a, th like I mentioned earlier, I have a theater degree. I have designed costumes before. I have maintained costumes before. I've done a lot of, I have sewing experience. I work in fashion currently. So it's like, I, I knew that, I knew what I was going to, I knew what to expect, mm -hmm. kind of. And I feel like my expectations were met precisely when I walked in on the first day of training and saw what I was going to be dealing with. Um, I can't, there obviously there are things that I can't say because yeah. Yeah. I want, I, part of my, of something that I still maintain, even though I've left the company is that I want to still maintain the magic for people. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to say much, but I can, I can definitely like dance around some stuff. There was a lot of my phone calls to home was like, Hey mom, I helped Eeyore get ready today. <laughs> and that's it. Like I, I felt like I couldn't say much. Um, so, um, yeah, so entertainment costuming essentially is like the maintain, like somebody, somebody has to keep track of this stuff because these costumes cost thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. So 
and each one is very precious and very unique and very like difficult to maintain. So like things break all like kids, right? Things break. Yeah. So like somebody has to keep track of those things. Somebody has to send them out for repairs. Somebody has to make sure that like things are in order because if you leave that up to just like designers and performers, some things can go wrong. So we're there mm-hmm. solely to keep the boat afloat. Right. And, like, and costuming wise. So um, a lot, my day-to-day routine was like, I have to get Eeyore, Winnie the Pooh and Tigger ready for their day tomorrow morning so they can just go out into the world at 8 a.m. ready to greet people. Like that, that was basically my job. So <laughs> what kills me was morning breakfast. Like I would start a shift at like 5 a.m. in in DL and literally like Disneyland. I would literally start a shift at like 5 a.m. and just sit there with Eeyore and we're both just like dead. (laughs) We're just like, okay, I guess guess we're going to go for this. Because like character breakfast starts early. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And like the the amount of like you have, like you just got to be with, you got to be on top of it. You can't miss things. If you see something is like a little bit like, a little bit off you've got to say something otherwise like this could potentially be dangerous for someone so like right. everything is like they are really t- like hard on you and thankfully I have the experience for that so it wasn't that difficult for me to kind of stay on top of that stuff out of curiosity how yeah. much would you say like because you're saying like oh if someone misses something like you know it's potentially dangerous like Mm-hmm. How in tune are, cause I have a, another, again, another like friend, friend of a friend who is mm-hmm. a former blueberry. Um, okay. and for those of you that don't blueberry. know what a blueberry, if any of y'all oh don't gosh, know what a blueberry is, I, I only learned it from her. So long. If none of y'all know what a blueberry is, it's the cast member attendant who is responsible for characters on their shifts to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing and they're safe. How much would you say the blueberries are in tune to potential misses and mishaps with, um, you know, costuming or things like that? I I would say pretty in tune because each, each like character has an aspect that makes us hold our breath a little bit. For example, for example, um, during, uh, Oogie Boogie Bash, we have the Mad Hatter, which is Johnny Mm -hmm. Depp's Mad Hatter from the live action. Mm -hmm. um the Mad Hatter's vest is gorgeously intricate there are at least maybe like 30 different buttons on that vest that are all different and all placed in different ways it doesn't button up like a normal vest right it looks unconventional in the way that the buttons go all the way up and around the vest those buttons don't stay put so I have the Mad Hatter running to me saying they fell off again (laughs) and I'm like I understand that. Yes. Yes. Like there are, and some of the, and most of the costumes are very secure, very, very safe. But however, walking around a lot of these characters get very tired. And um, so naturally like maintenance comes in to make sure that everyone's okay. Um, But there are aspects of like some of the costumes that are very fragile. And so we kind of expect some things to happen. Shoes, especially. Yeah. Shoes especially, like we, we, we take care of their shoes because like they walk around a lot mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. The, the bottoms get worn out very quickly. So things like that, that we, that we kind of expect. Um, and we're trained to expect them too. We're trained to not freak out when these things happen and kind of like calm everybody down, just get it done and send them on their way. Yeah. I was just curious. Cause I'm like, I was, I would sit there and you're talking about your experiences and things. And I'm like, I would have to imagine that you guys would have to be pretty in tune and like mm-hmm. good communicators with, you know, blueberries, um, exactly, to maintain, yeah. you know, integrity and safety. So blueberries you know. in Florida, in California, we're all in blue. Mm-hmm. So I, I was love a blueberry. that. Oh. Was, they call it blueberry. So I was a blueberry. Oh, I love that. That makes me happy for you. Oh, and it's like, it's, I was so funny, like living in the DCP, like my roommate comes home, she's from like, a 1940s ice cream attendant and my other roommate is dressed in a haunted mansion gown and i come in in my little blue shirt Aww. and they're all like i hate you how do you look so good in that and i'm like yeah i, I mean to be fair <laughs> to be fair there are some cast member costumes that are pretty yeah like unfortunate oh don't even get me started on the new orleans square stuff <laughs> <laughs> 
like that that needed to go yesterday like oh my gosh <laughs> my poor roommate was one of them in that, oh, no. in that costume and she when she put it on she was like she's also latina so she looks she was she's like in shock standing in that costume anytime like that she moose. was whenever she was a greeter and she had to wear when she got to wear the haunted mansion dress instead she was relieved oh i'm sure she's like thank god i don't i don't look like that anymore <laughs> it was bad it was really and it was i'm glad that they got that they're planning on getting rid of it because it is questionable is there any like other like role or like costume that you'd want to do Ooh, or, like, i like have always did... been like that would be so much fun dream yeah. role i did um now that if i ever worked on face on like characters like mm-hmm. the mad hatter like cinderella it was because it was uh due to oogie boogie bash and i right. was working in california adventure and they just happened to stop by um i would have loved to do more um marvel oh uh, for sure marvel okay. was one of them for sure i had so what happens in costuming is that there are many many aspects of of costuming so you have we call them venues so you have the venue that does shows the venue that does inventory the venue that does like who helps the princesses get ready and all that stuff. So um, I did, um, I was with Nikki and Minnie and them. And then I was in inventory, taking inventory stock, um, which is actually was a marvelous job. I didn't think it would be that good, but I enjoyed myself. That sounds pretty cool, actually. It was cool because I was the first to see new stuff and the last to see stuff go. Yeah. I think I have the most secrets through my inventory job than I do my Mickey, my Mickey Mouse job, which is hilarious to think about, but like, I have a lot of secrets from that job. Like there, I was, I learned things about projects before other people because I was the first to see new stuff. Um, Like there was a moment where my manager from inventory brings in these fantastic snowflakes, snowflakes that attach to the back of this, the skaters, the dancers. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Those. And he brings them to me and he says, I need you to scan these in. Just don't touch them. They're from Tokyo. If they break, I'm dead. Like, don't look at them. Oh, that's a big. Don't breathe on them. No yeah, pressure. Yeah. Them. Like, scan was, them, but don't touch them. Like, you no can pressure. Like, ju- just look away, scan and call it a day. And I was like, okay, I got you. I did things like that. But I also did things like the, the dancing flower in Fantasmic. Oh, cool. Has dancers inside who wear gloves. They get new gloves because their old ones are gross. And somebody has to hand press a, a barcode on them on every single glove. That's oh, like 15 joy. to 100 gloves. And then input them in the system and make sure they're going to the right destination. That was me to like one in the morning one day. Wow. Um, God. Ew. It, it's a very thorough and again like it's nothing that I'm not trained for which yeah. is fantastic they trained mm-hmm. me so well to handle their system um, I still feel like even with training you have to be like mega organized and mega type a to make that too. work because I mean their organization system is immaculate oh I'm sure like, yeah that, I will there's say that, so much like, going on like those spreadsheets made my heart race oh I, I feel like, like I would have such a fangirl moment looking at some organized spreadsheets Ooh, oh, oh man yeah. Oh. oh yeah like the there were like laundry spreadsheets of like these this is going to the cleaners and like this is going to oogie boogie bash and i'm like Whew, okay so that I'm level of happy. organization is a huge serotonin boost it is it oh, is man. They, are, they are so well thought out it's great and i'm it sure it helped you a lot so yeah oh, exactly yeah. it helped you so much it, it saved me so much time i felt like i wouldn't be, i would be there till 5 a.m every day if i didn't have that their spreadsheet mm-hmm. um so yeah I, I i back to the question at hand uh what, what would you do marvel is one of, is a big one because in inventory i was looking at a lot of marvel stuff which i can't talk about but oh, yeah. um i was looking at a lot of marvel stuff and i would love to have you know had more time to kind of deep dive into this stuff especially spider-man i felt the suit once and it was fun so yeah, that's still really cool <laughs> The second one I wanted to do was Coco Musical Celebration because mm-hmm. that show means a lot to me. Uh-huh. I was with my best friend Noah when I saw it for the first time 
And it was incredible to me how the entire audience was people who looked like me. And that yeah. just like made me cry. And like the mariachi divas, I love them. I'm obsessed with the mariachi divas and they made me so happy. So when I like went into the venue to like pick some stuff up for inventory, my, my cast member friend goes, do you want to meet the mariachi divas? And I was like, would I? <laughs> I like had a heart. I later found out that my late great uncle knew them. Oh, wow. Oh, cool. I, I like, like they, they were at his funeral. I'm like, what is going on? So if I had known, I would have been like, hi, I'm his niece. But yeah. No. But yeah, but I did meet the Mariachi Divas and I like almost passed out. That's awesome. <laughs> so it was so really cool fun. though. Yeah. I love fango moments like that. That's like one of my, like, I have a lot of surreal moments. Um, I have a lot of weird moments, like stories that are like wild. And I have stories that are just completely surreal. And it was, it was like, and I think that specifically only applies to my role as well. Mm -hmm. Cause like, I do not envy the food workers. I do not oh, envy yeah, the food no. workers. Like I, if, if anyone takes away anything from this, from this episode, be nice to the food cast members, please. Oh my God. Yeah. Please be real. nice. I have heard too much. Like all of my friends worked in food and none of them were happy. Like be nice, please. Because they deal with yeah. a lot. They deal with a lot in a short amount of time. So it like, it, they just need much more grace than what is given for them. Cause yeah. they work so hard. They work way harder than I ever did. See, even when they take you an hour to get your food, they're because probably you have like to have special out. food. Hey, it happens. I know. I'm not judging them. I'm very, very thankful for what they do. Mm -hmm. They work so hard. They really do. Yeah, for reals. Yeah. Like I get, I got asked a lot. Like, so I was, this is one of my favorite stories. I was in line for popcorn because I love Disneyland popcorn a lot. And I did it every single day that I went there that I was, as a guest, I would go get popcorn. And I heard somebody behind me looking at Goofy walking down. And I waved hi because they know me. The Goofy knows me. So I like waved. And, um, and he waved back and it was cute. And the woman behind me says to her friend, I could never meet those people. I could never meet the, the, the characters. I'm just so scared. And uh -huh. I was like, Goofy's actually really cool. Like Goofy's really chill. Yeah. Like, you could, you could definitely meet Goofy. Like it'd be fun. And, um, the, the person, the woman goes, you know, Goofy. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, no, totally. I totally know Goofy. And like, you know, the person in the costume. And I'm like, Oh God. Oh, oh God. I'm like, I know Goofy very well. I help Goofy get ready every single day. I'm trained for this. I'm like, I know what to say. I'm like, no, like Goofy's like, I, I get Goofy ready every single morning. Like I work with him a lot. Like he's a great, a great person to meet. See, I hate people so, to try and spoil things like that. Like I know. Mm -hmm. And and the woman says to me like, oh, so you work here. And I'm like, yeah. And she says, is it like as bad as everybody says? <laughs> like, is it really bad? And I said, honestly, if I'm being real, it depends on where you are. And it depends on what, if you yeah. love what you're doing because you could love working in an attraction, but if you're food and beverage, I don't envy you. Yeah. So. Not for real. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool that all like every every different or every experience that a person has, especially working for the company is completely different. Very like different. there's so many jobs to choose from mm -hmm. uh, and so many different places, which is really cool. Well, and I even think about watching my friends Matthews progress from, so when she did her DCP, she was on like um, outside of the Chinese theater, um, you know, in Hollywood studios and then watching her move over to attractions and working attractions in Midway Mania and then watching her become an area coordinator and then watching her coordinate the opening of Galaxy's Edge, like, and just watching mm -hmm. her journey and watching her grow in different spots and going from DCP to exactly. part-time to full-time, you know, it's, it's just totally different you know, mm -hmm. even in the same park and doing the same thing within different areas. Like she had mm -hmm. different things to say about working in Batu, you know, than she does about working in Toy Story Mania. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just, it's very interesting and it's really cool. And it really is just kind of showing like Disney does have a place for everybody. Yeah, for everybody. sure. Everybody. And it's yeah. so different. Like it really depends on where you are. If you love your, that'll make you just love being there and working yeah. there. 